What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Sky Bees. That's right, guys. So last episode, we ended up getting ourselves a little bit of power. Yeah, we tried making this guy here, and we found out that we weren't able to use it, at least right now. I'm sure we will be able to use it. Uh, and then we ended up leaving off the episode with the resourceful bees honey generator here, which we can use just by putting bottles of honey in, and it produces some RF, which is pretty cool. Yeah, so I was reading the comments, and you guys say this thermal thermo generator, uh, you need to pipe water in from the top, and I guess it goes into this tank here, and then you have to provide it some kind of heat source. I mean, looking at this thing, it looks like you can pump in water from every side, but you guys said from the top, so I'll just assume you guys know what you're talking about. Uh, but yeah, then we need some kind of heat source underneath it. Some people said that we can use this block of uranium that we already had. Other people said that we should use magma block. Either way, that's fine. We'll uh, take a look at that. But what I would like to do today is I would like to start making ourselves some bees that are useful. So right now we've only really made gravel bees as far as resource bees go. We do have some vanilla bees over here, but I would like to make sand bees and dust bees. It'll just make our life easier. And I would also like to start getting our centrifuge up and running so I don't have to manually crank every single comb going through there. So let's take it a take a look at a centrifuge. So a, a centrifuge. Oh, by the way, I did upgrade this pack to the latest version. It says this is the final version. And this is now on Minecraft 116.5, the latest version of 116. So there's that. Apparently they removed a mod called Performant, which a lot of people are having issues with. Like it was keeping uh, bees from going back in their hive and causing a lot of weirdness. Well, anyway, hopefully that's all solved and this pack's better now. This is the first time I've played it uh, since updating. But anyway, let's get back to this. So the center fudge, we do need to get ourselves a piston, some smooth stone and some iron ingots. That's all not so difficult to do uh so i don't think i have any stone smelted at least not up there oh yeah we do have some down here okay so we have to take stone and re-smelt that into the smooth stone and then everything else i believe was just like iron and then a piston right uh so let's grab somewhere around here i have the things that i'm looking for charcoal i guess we'll just grab some coal hey you know what let's just go crazy here We'll use up our furnaces, get this done real fast. Like, I don't know if we need this much smooth stone, but if we do need more in the future, we will have it. So there's that. And there we go. So 64 of those are all cooking up. All right, very good. So we needed a piston. Uh, so we are going to need, was it three planks, redstone dust, which it doesn't look like we have any in there. Redstone dust right here, one iron ingot, Actually, we're gonna need more iron than that, but one iron ingot for right now, and some cobblestone. So, make ourselves a piston. Do doot. All right, we uh, should have enough of that. We needed a bucket too, right? Yeah, so one bucket. All right, and then something like this, like that, like this. What else was it? Then the smooth stone on either side. Oh, okay. Wait, where's all my stuff? Uh. It says we're missing this, even though it's here. Okay, hold on. If I have it in my inventory, okay, now it works. <laughs> there we go, centrifuge. Quest complete, centrifuge, we did it. All right, so if we place this right here next to the honey generator, we get the power over into this, and there's our 6.3 KRF, apparently, and this is empty. Okay, so what I wanna see, display fluid output, oh. Oh, this can do fluids too, oh, well, that's kinda cool. Oh yeah, I suppose that makes sense since we will be getting honey, right? Um, what I want to see is like how fast this thing goes or how slow it goes and the power requirements and that kind of stuff. Let's take one stack of gravel honeycomb and we'll throw it into this thing and see what happens. And we had some power and now we don't. Right. So this was one bottle of honey. One bottle of honey will sift one gravel, or I guess one honeycomb. And then we get, is that a bottle of honey back? Is that how that works? I don't really know. Is that a quarter, is a honey bottle a quarter of a bucket of honey? Um, 
right clicking do i have to right click out here would it auto fill i don't actually know how this works okay well i'm not seeing anything happen so i'm going to assume that a honey bottle requires more <laughs> uh all right so we'll put that in here we'll give it some more power it'll do some more stuff and that's gonna go away and then we should get more honey let me gonna put a bottle here okay so the bottle got consumed it still says 250 and now we have a honey bottle here I don't understand. So why did I not get that honey out? Will it only ever complete after a comb is completed? Maybe that's the, the problem here. So now the next question is, if I do this and run this again, do we get two bottles of honey and then nothing left in the tank? Because it feels like it only fills it up at completion. No, nope, we still have 250 millibuckets there. Okay. Uh, maybe we don't get honey every time. Maybe that's the difference. I don't know. Well, anyway... Uh, this doesn't seem like a really good way of doing it, especially since it relies on us getting honey every single time. And it doesn't look like we get that from centrifuging, at least in this, every single time. So, um, maybe we should revisit this thermo generator. So people were saying that there are pipes in this that we can use uh, from Cyclic, this fluid cable specifically. And Cyclic also has like a wrench... Uh, actually, hold on a second. Let's see. I was looking at this a minute ago. Cyclic. This thing. A cable wrench. Uh, extract mode change settings on cyclic cables. So, yeah. Maybe we need to make this. This doesn't look expensive. And then we can make this fluid cable, which doesn't look expensive. Followed by an infinite water source, which we would probably use a sink from cooking for blockheads. So there's that as well. So that's some terracotta water bucket, all of this. This should provide infinite water. I think it's configurable that you can pipe in and out of it. I assume you can pipe out of this. Uh, so yeah, we put water into here using the pipes and then we power this and then we should have infinite power theoretically. Let's see how this works. All right, so I got done making the different components that we wanted, the fluid cable, the cable wrench and our sink. Got that all done. In fact, I even made a uh, stone cutter so we could make the, was it the stairs a little bit easier? Instead of having to do six at a time, you can just do one into one. Yeah, anyway, so we got one of those made. So I was looking at this thermo generator starter and people said, like I said in the comments, that we can put it on this uranium block for heat, but I don't think that's the case. If we take a look at the uses for this, we can click the heat sources and there's only three options listed here. So we have a magma block, lava, and the block of blazing crystal. So magma block is the lowest temperature, lava is the second, and then, or I guess the middle, and then uh, the block of blazing crystal is where you want to be, but that's going to require some stuff. So we need nine of these crystals to make one of those, and these crystals are made in this energizing thing, which requires 120,000 Fe and four blaze powder per. So we need 36 blaze powder and a whole lot of power, or I guess we could also use a blaze rod for less power. But anyway, uh, yeah, we aren't quite there yet, but yeah, that's where we want to be. So I guess lava is going to be what we want to do at the start here to get the most amount of heat or maybe power out of this thing. I don't know how much heat affects the power this thing generates, but yeah, let's go ahead and try that. It won't go there. I can put our fired crucible back. Um, yeah, I guess we're just going to set down a little thing here to kind of test since I haven't messed with this before. So we'll do something like this. Whoops, not there. That's going to go there. We need a bucket of lava. Right, this will go here. The lava underneath it. I don't see anything here that says that it is receiving heat. Got no feedback on that. All right, well, anyway, so there's that, and then we can put down our sink somewhere. Uh, people said that it has to go into the top, so I guess we'll put the sink right here, and we'll just pipe out and then go into the top, I guess. All right, so nothing's happening. I think we have to set this thing to extract mode. Oh, now things are happening. Oh, I got water now. <laughs> uh, yes, we have water in here. We are getting power. Oh, that's, that's actually generating power quite quickly, isn't it? So this is pretty good. 15 EF. Per tick. What's an EF? I have no idea. Did these say EF on it? Yeah. No, they say FE. Uh, I think that's backwards. Should that be FE? <laughs> anyway, 
Um, so yeah, we're getting that. So the next question is the center fuse here. Let's take these items out and I'll stick this next to here. Do we make enough power? Do we make enough power that this will just keep running? That is what we're going to find out. All right. So it is going and we are not making enough power. Nope. So this will not keep it going indefinitely, but it will keep it going for a little while anyway. I don't know how this thing reacts, if there's not enough power to complete the operation, if it just doesn't work at all, or if it kind of like goes slower or whatever, I guess we'll find that out. But yeah, this is pretty cool. Um, so I guess the next question is, what is the upgraded version? What's the next one? So the basic one is the next tier up that requires more of this dielectric stuff, basic capacitors, thermo paste, is more of the same stuff that we've done and then the original uh thermo generator the starter version how are we doing here looks like it's doing stuff but doesn't look like it's making any progress so this will not work unless it has enough power we're just using up all the power and doing nothing with it okay oh actually does this say temperature 1c oh that's just the coolant uh yeah it doesn't really give you much information on this thing does it okay well anyway uh, let's go ahead and upgrade this to the basic version and then see how much, oh, it actually says right here, 70 FE per tick. Okay. Uh, and then the hardened version requires energized steel. I don't even know. Okay. We have to get into this energizing thing. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. Let's make the basic one. All right, so I've made some changes here. I have added in two more centrifuges for a total of three of them. Yep, and they are all working. Unfortunately, adding that third one is using too much power. I was just looking at this. Uh, this particular thermo generator can support two just fine, but three of them, not so much. So each one of these probably takes 30 RF per tick. It doesn't say on it anywhere how much it takes. But yeah, I'm going to assume it's 30 RF per tick and we are 20 RF per tick shy of supporting that. So we're making an additional 10. Um, I also uh, rearranged where the sink was and where the uh, fluid cable is going into this thing just to try and clean it up a little bit. And I think that's a, a lot nicer. We could probably insert this into the ground one or something. But anyway, so that's where we're at right now. I did notice that the centrifuges were... Um, collecting some honey like when they ran out of bottles we saw that before and i think each bottle is 250 millibuckets i'm not entirely sure but anyway uh this one was up to three buckets so i extracted it out and it turns out there's actually three and a quarter buckets in there uh, i made a basic fluid tank for mechanism which is uh actually rather inexpensive just three iron and three redstone dust to make this i extracted the honey out using our fluid keebles or whatever and yeah, can't really do much with this, honey. <laughs> can't uh, right click an empty bottle on there. I can pick it up with a bucket and place it down and it acts kind of like water, except it like flows out pretty slowly. But other than that, I didn't really see any other use for it in the world. So if we look at honey, I assume that's what this is. Well, actually, I guess there's also resourceful bee honey. Uh, so yeah, okay. So I was looking at this honey, this honey from Cyclic, has some uses here, which is kind of interesting. So like you can make three of these honey apples with only 300 millibuckets of honey. I don't know if these are or dictionary together like this honey, the cyclic version is the same as the resourceful bees version. I don't know. But anyway, you can make uh, some amber honey block you can make which with sticks, which I don't understand why you'd want to do this because you can just do the honey bottles together. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, uh, golden carrots can be made with two carrots, one gold nugget, and some honey, which is not bad. Honeycomb block only takes three honeycomb and 100 millibuckets of honey. Not bad as well. This I don't understand. Maybe that's how you get the honey from the fluid back into the bottles. You have to do the solidification chamber recipe. I don't know. Um, yeah, we can make beehives with this. With one chest, one honeycomb, and a stick. That's kind of interesting. That's rather cheap, to be honest. Cake, bee nest. Well, anyway, those are the things I was looking at. So uh, this resourceful bees honey, I did not look at. And looks like we are going to need this to make an ME storage housing. 
Oh, so if we want to get into a plight energistics, it looks like we will have to use this fluid honey. Interesting. Okay. 64K. Interesting. Fluid storage component. Oh, this will make this kind of nice if we get into fluid storage and apply it energistics. Okay, this is a little bit down the road, I am sure. Uh, but just something to look forward to, I guess. Um, so anyway, if we go back and take a look at this, we are collecting beeswax quite nicely and getting a lot of honey out of these things. Let's go ahead and empty these out. And yeah, the power is starting to run low. Let's go ahead and stop this from continuing since we are not going to be able to power all three of those. Uh, put some bottles in there since we're missing it. We're getting some more honey in there. This one's still fine. Okay. Uh, yeah, we've gotten a whole bunch more honey bottles. Let me do this and this. Okay, very good. Uh, I guess I will throw these into here so we have more. Right, so these honey blocks, we could look at making the tier three, or is it the tier four? Maybe it's the tier four beehive. Uh, that requires these honey blocks. It does require honeycomb blocks. And then the previous tier, oh yeah, we haven't made the tier threes yet. So the tier fours are something we can do. Let's look at the tier threes real quick. Uh, let me bookmark this before I lose it. So bookmark that one, this one. Bookmark that one as well. So the tier three beehive, that is the beeswax blocks. So now that we are centrifuging as we are doing, uh, we're getting plenty of the beeswax. So now we can look at upgrading to the next tier hive and then the tier after that as well, which is pretty cool. So yeah, there you go. There is eight beeswax blocks. So we can do two hives, I guess, right? That requires the previous hive. Yep. All right. This looks like something that we'll be able to do. And then we have plenty of these blocks down here to make the recipe work. So that'll be something that we'll have to do here coming up pretty soon. Well, the next step is to move these hives. I don't want them here in the center anymore. I kind of want to move them out to these outer honeycomb areas. So I made some new bee jars and all the bees just went away. I just slept. They all popped out. They grabbed their pollen and now they're back in their hive. So I'm going to have to wait until they finish doing what they're doing in the hive, producing more honey levels, I suppose, and then popping back out. Uh, I'm going to break a piece of glass. In fact, I could just do that now and just wait on them. Uh, break a piece of glass, wait on them, right click them all into the empty bee jars. Then we can pick up their hives. They're probably going to be popping out here in just a moment. Uh, yeah, and then pick them up in these jars and then we can move their hives. I don't know if breaking this hive angers these bees. It probably does, right? Because any bee doesn't like their hives being broken, or I guess a hive being broken. Um, let's go ahead and break this one too. But yeah, I definitely want to get all of these bees into the bee jars and then we can move them. Okay, well, interestingly enough, these bees went into their hive and they came back out. And these bees over here still haven't come out of their hive. So the vanilla bees go really slow compared to the resource bees. Huh. At least 50% slower, it seems like. I'm not... And there they go back into the hive. So they've already done two cycles. And these guys have only came out and went back into the hive once. I didn't realize that there was that drastic of a difference before. Unless there's something else going on. Oh, there we go. Now they're all coming out. Let's grab them. And you guys. Awesome. All right. So all the bees are now contained in these jars. Do I have... How many do I have here? That is nine... 10, 11. Apparently we're missing. Oh, you know what? I actually had one more B over here. All right. So that is 12, right? Yeah. 12 bees. So yeah, we can go ahead and upgrade these hives. Uh, I think I'll wait for those bees to go into their hive over there and then I'll break these just so they don't get angry at me. I don't know if that really matters, but let's go and do that. Now we can break this. Nice. And this one as well. Okay. Yeah, so we should be able to upgrade these to the next tier. So let's do that one. So that tier three hive, uh, we do need the honeycomb blocks and I don't have those on me. Just grab a stack of those. We'll be just fine. Okay, this and this. So there is tier three beehives. And then we should be able to just upgrade those straight to the tier fours, I think. And there we go. Tier fours. Awesome. So each one of these can hold 16 bees and it can produce up to 20 honeycombs. 
and then it has the hive time modification of 20%, minus 20%, so they should go that much faster. So that's pretty cool. Um, anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and like change this whole setup, move it over there. I don't know if I'm gonna move the gravel bees over there as well, but I'm gonna move at least these over there. So let me do that, we'll be back. All the beehives are now moved over here so we don't have to listen to them constantly while we're doing things, while we're crafting or whatever. Uh, this took a little bit of time to get everything hooked back up, but yeah, it's pretty much a repetitive process doing the same thing over and over again. Each one of these hives can support up to 16 bees and they only have six in there, so we could have 30 more bees in total. I don't know if you can mix and match the different types of bees per hive. I assume you can't. Um, so yeah, we could probably make a whole lot more bees here. A lot more gravel bees get a lot more gravel comb that much quicker. And then I also want to look at making the sand and the dust bees like I had mentioned before. So that'll be something that we'll be doing here in the future. But for now, I think we're probably at a wrapping up point for this episode. I was kind of hoping to get a little bit more done today, but yeah, it's actually kind of nice down here. We don't have those chests on our face anymore. Uh, coming down here to the sifting area, all of that stuff has now moved back over here. It's in a nice, neat little area. So yeah, if we want anything from the bees, we can come over here and grab that. Uh, these drawers, I think, are getting a pretty close to full. I don't remember exactly how much each one of these holds, but I do know that the, um, oh goodness, what is this? Storage drawers. Storage drawers. They have upgrades, and I think there's actually quests for us to do these upgrades, so we can upgrade how much this holds by twice as much by making an obsidian, uh, storage upgrade. Yep. So that just sticks in obsidian and stuff. Uh, we could also upgrade it with iron, gold, diamond, and emerald. Each one of these adds in a whole bunch of different tiers. This is by far the best one that upgrades it 32 times. And then each one of these, you can have in that many upgrades. So yeah, a single drawer can hold a crazy amount of stuff. Yep. So that's pretty cool. Um, another thing, this mod pack by default with the storage drawers, when you break them, it just contains the items inside. You don't have to make yourself the packing tape if you didn't know that, which is really convenient. Yep, you just break the drawer, take it with you, set it down somewhere else, and you are good to go. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, anyway, guys, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap the episode up here for today. We got ourselves unlimited power, which is really awesome. Uh, we're definitely going to have to collect more resources, specifically redstone, so we can make more of those. <laughs> We'll look at upgrading to the next tiers of those different uh, generators and all of that kind of stuff here coming up pretty soon. And I'm definitely looking forward to us being able to get into digital storage and not have to keep rummaging through the vanilla chest. But anyway, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on this episode if you liked it, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.